Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to session two of Let's Learn Laravel. And we're going to begin this on a very high note. I am loving this uh, so far. I'm loving the first session that I recorded for you guys. And um, I'm glad that you guys are actually going to be enjoying this series uh, together with me. Um, it's, it's a highly requested uh, series to be done, especially now that Laravel has hit version 8. And we, we're going to actually take a look at so many various uh, things to do with um, development for the web uh, using Laravel. And uh, it's unlike anything else, actually. Uh, I, I, I took a look at uh, WordPress. I saw that it was actually quite easier to develop on WordPress because uh, they give you a backend and they give you a good UI to work around things and develop things with, Lar uh, to, to develop things with WordPress. It's not so bad. But when you come with Laravel, Laravel gives you full control. The only problem is Laravel takes longer to develop than WordPress. And uh, yeah, I'd say that. But it gives you full control over your own security, your own size of application. And it's it gives you scalability. And that's a beautiful thing when it comes to Laravel. Now, we want to look at something very uh, important today. And that's uh, how to do version control uh, on a Laravel application. Now, say for example, if you're working in Teams or you want to share some applications with some other people and they don't, and or rather you've been shared for an application and you don't know how to actually clone it into your system and the things that you need to do with your system, then this is a very important thing to get into, uh, version control. Say if you got lost in a certain version or you created or pushed some certain code uh, into your main branch and you don't know how to revert it back well version control is there as well so you guys can actually uh, get into uh, how it goes if you want to go into a previous version or if you want to stick to the same version as the one that you have on a current base on a current basis now it also enables you not to lose your documents and here is why and here is how check this out so i'm going to come back into my project over here and I'm going to initialize this as a local Git repository uh, for my application. So my application is called blog. I'm just going to type in Git in it. And it's going to say initialize an empty Git repository in my blog. So this is how it appears. This All the files that are going to be tracked into our database or rather our Git repository that are going to be uh, remote is going to be tracked like this. It's going to be marked with the green. And the green usually means untracked, but rather untracked, meaning that it's going to be noticed, but it's not being tracked so that it cannot be uploaded into our Git repository. Now, if we want it to be tracked, all you just need to do is git add and then state the name of the file that we want to track into our Git repository. Or we can just write a space and then do a dot to mean that we want to track all of them. So we're going to press enter at this point and then we're going to see index added meaning that these files now have been tracked and they've been added into our index cool now what what do we want to do after tracking all our files we want to commit the changes of our git a git's uh, local repository so that's what we're going to be doing we're going to type in git commit and then we're going to do a hyphen M and then do two quotes over here. And in between those two quotes, we're going to type in our comment. And this comment will be probably uh, my first commit of the new Laravel lecture. And it's going to commit all those changes and all that all those colors will disappear. Now what happens now this committing means that the files are already being saved into our local repository but we want to upload it into a certain like online uh, remote repository uh whether it be git bash uh, whether it be github or bitbucket or something like that maybe even heroku if we want to host our project there uh let's just do this we're just going to go to github because that's all i know for sure i've never been to get bitbucket's website let me actually look at it uh, now that we are actually on here. <clears throat> so Bitbucket, I never thought it was actually blue. I thought it would be actually pink at this point because it just sounds like a pink site. So Bitbucket is one uh, remote repository that you can use. But I like using GitHub as you can see I'm already logged in. And what I'm going to do as I'm logged in is I've 
send in a Steve number. So I'm going to go in and click on new. I'm going to say repository name Laravel uh, lecture one. So I'm going to do hyphen and then lecture uh, one. Let's say two actually. Yeah, uh, Laravel lectures. Uh, we're going to use this uh, and then I'm going to call it blog. Yeah, Laravel lectures. We're going to use this entire project for the blog for the for the entire project for the entire course itself. And then I'm going to make it a public repository. We can make it private if you want to, but uh, I prefer making it public. And then we're going to add a readme file. Not not a chance. Add a git ignore. Not a chance because it already has a git ignore. It already has a readme. And choose a license. I don't think I want to choose one yet. So I'm going to create the repository and at this point after creating the repository we can see that we have a link over here and it's an empty remote repository at this point. So I'm going to copy this link and then I'm going to initialize some few functions inside my project uh, right now. Okay, so inside my project I'm going to do something here. So I'm going to say git remote hyphen v to check if we have any links and if it returns empty then we don't have any links uh, to any repository. So this is what I want to do. I want to type in git remote add origin. So now add means we're going to add a link. Origin is the variable name we've given this link and the link itself is going to be that. I'm going to press enter and then this time I'm going to type in git remote hyphen v and we can see we have a, a link for fetching and a link for pushing which is all titled origin. Now what we want to do is to push all this data into our repository and there's something that you guys will notice uh, in a few seconds uh, so git push origin main so there's going to be an error there and it's because that error source ref spec main does not match any fail to push some refs to that so now this is the reason why we don't have a certain branch called main inside our repository what we need to do at this point is we want to do we want to check uh, our our branch list over here over here so i'm going to check that by typing git branch and it's going to say master meaning we're going to our master branch that's the branch that we are on or rather we are supposed to go to uh, but inside our git repository the branches that are supposed to be done uh, like as the first branch is supposed to be called main branch now the reason why that is is because github had actually changed the entire um, line of uh, acceptance really it's going to be main instead of master at this time at this point of time they changed the name of the main of the master branch and they called it the main branch so at this point i'm going to just type in git branch and then to change uh, the branch i want to type in hyphen m and then i want to type in the name of the branch to be main now after doing that i'm just going to type in git branch and then you can see that it's going to the main branch so now I want to push in this uh, function that I called before. That's the get push origin main. I'm going to press enter and it's going to push all my data to the git repository that we set up. So we're going to go into our repository over here and I'm just going to hit one button, the refresh button. And we can see our main branch, which is the main default branch is the one that is displaying all our project items now i want to hold these two side by side actually because there's something that you guys need to notice so we have app present bootstrap pre uh, present config present database present node modules hmm not present interesting because it's the one that is ha having the darker gray uh, texting Okay, public is present, resource is present, routes is present, storage is present, test is present, vendor, huh, not present. Editor config is present, env, not present. Interesting. You can see a trend that's going on over here. env.example is present, 
all these others are all present and you will see that now why are these other ones like the dot env node modules and vendor modules not present well that is simple because if we go into our dot git ignore we will be able to see that we have our node modules that has been defined as a folder node modules we have our public slash hot being defined we have our public storage being defined storage and all that end that with the, with the with the label key at the end it's being defined we have vendor we have dot env dot env backup php result cache homestead.json homestead.yaml uh, npm debug.log and yarn error.log all of these have been noted in our dot git ignore and hence won't appear in our remote repository and here is why because our remote repository is first of all public secondly it has limited space only we have limited space on github because github is free and we don't pay for storage whatsoever we can not have our vendor or our node modules on it because that will ma majorly uh, mess up the system because the node modules folder is big it is very big our vendor as well is big is very very big so we cannot have our node modules and our vendor folders within our repository right here likewise for our .env in terms of security our .env and our log files and our .env.backup files will not appear in our remote repository and this is the reason for security if we don't have security set up properly and we have all our credentials and everything that we need let's say for example if you're setting up uh, a certain payment plan for paypal pesapal or mpesa and you have all the variables inside your env then you're going to be messed up if it's going to be posted in your in your in your public repository because everyone will be able to see your credentials maybe probably hack you in terms of cyber security that's not a very good thing and uh yeah you'll get hacked your money will be stolen and you will suffer loss now this is why uh version control using the dot git ignore inside here is very important because those those kinds of things are very important now it's good to clone the dot env variables that you have like app name app env and all those things it's good to clone all those as values for your dot env dot example such that when we're going to clone this on like let's say a new machine we are going to uh, be able to set up a, a copy and paste into our dot env uh, from our dot env dot example and then set up our app key and set up everything else now this is my demonstration i'm going to use git clone and i'm going to say this link and i'm going to press enter so it's going to clone it into laravel lectures blog and it's cloned it already so i'm going to bring this here and i'm going to open this with vs code so now i've cloned this from my uh my github now i'm going to stop the server for this other one uh mainly because i want to run the server on this other one this one here so i've stopped it here and then i've come and started it here so i'm going to do php artisan serve and whoa what's this errors everywhere so we can see php warning fail to open stream no such file directory and stuff like that because it's looking for a vendor folder you see these things are required the vendor 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 they're all required and it's not there so what do we do to restore our vendor folder all we really need to do because our composer.json is there and our vendor is not there our composer.json has the list of items that are supposed to be inside our vendor so if we do something as simple as composer install then our function will start working again because it's going to take all the list of whatever is in it run through that list uh, of whatever it needs and then just post or install everything or bring everything from the archive and put it inside our vendor folder simple as 
The same thing occurs with our package.json. If we run an npm install, then everything inside our package.json will be installed into our node modules folder. And that it's as it's as easy as that, basically. Awesome. So upon retrieving all this uh, composer package uh, enable, enabling functions, we can just do this php artisan and we'll get our list over here. Before that, it wouldn't work because, of course, it will say that we need something to do from vendor or, what that, or, or whatever it needs uh, from there. So we're just going to run php artisan serve and, of course, again, it will throw an error. This is why. If I click on this, you'll see a server error. And the reason why this server error is there is because it can't read anything from my environment. Why can't it read anything from my environment? Because we don't have our .env. So this is what we need to do. Uh, we need to open another terminal, or rather, let's not even open another terminal. Let's just do it from here. I'll just hit Control C so that you can stop this server from running. Um, now, we just need to do a certain command called cp. cp means copy. And if we are going to copy, we just want to copy our .env .example. And then we want to copy it and paste it as .env. And then there, we have our file there, right there. We have a file. Now, we want to come in here and look at what is required of us. And the only thing that is required from us is our app key. Now, let me save this and actually run this on our PHP Artisan serve. And then I'm going to open it again. And you can see no application encryption has been specified. So you can see it is required. So there's two methods that you can generate this application key. You can hit this generate app key and it will run it through these terminals that you can pop up over here. Or you can come in here and just type in php artisan key generate like so. And then you can see your application key has popped up. So now I'm going to run the php artisan serve one last time and it will be back. So that's all you need to do to set up Laravel with with the uh, with the node package manager with the npm and everything else. All you just need to do is npm install, uh, which is a command that you can run on a different terminal as this server runs. So I'm just going to do npm install, and for npm you can shorten it. It can be npm i, like so. So you'll just run that npm i and everything will just be running as smoothly as possible. So you can see everything is back to normal at this point and everything is a well set and done. So we're going to talk about how to go about the front end and the back end. Uh, more so on the back end first, such that we can manipulate data to do whatever we want it to do. And then after that, we can now uh, conclude the front end. So thank you for tuning in and knowing how to uh, go about in pushing your project data into, into GitHub and then also pulling it down uh, and cloning it into your uh, new project folder or whatever you want, maybe even a new machine so that you can continue working from wherever. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one.